Hi, my name is Anna with Always Write, and today I wanted to talk to you about the formula to writing a bestseller. There have been so many series that have made it on the bestsellers list, starting with Twilight and Harry Potter and even Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code. Now, this little book, you may think, okay, great, they made some movies with Tom Hanks, what about it? Well, The Da Vinci Code itself sold over 83 million copies. Now, Dan Brown hasn't always been the biggest novelist selling millions of copies. He actually wrote and published four books before The Da Vinci Code, and they themselves sold about 10,000 copies before he published The Da Vinci Code. Now, what made the Da Vinci Code so wonderful? We'll get into that. Now, there are five aspects of the Da Vinci Code that really stand out and I've seen hold true with many other best-selling series as well as novels. Now, the first thing I've seen in these best-selling novels is that they always have a hook within the first chapter or the first 20 pages because it doesn't matter how well written you may have a fight scene on page 120 or if there's a dramatic twist on page 87 of your novel. If someone can't make it through the first 20 pages of your novel, they're not going to reach those epic moments you were planning on su surprising them with or sharing with them. If you are an author out there looking to be published or looking to be the next big thing, make sure that you have a hook within the first 20 pages. This will help you when you're trying to publish your book as well as in sales. In fact, when I was working for a literary agent, my job was to go through what they call the slush pile and try to see if I could find a piece of work that was publishable. I had read so many submissions that I could tell within the first five pages if a book was publishable. The second aspect I found in best-selling novels was that they had fascinating characters that were a little mysterious. So I wanted to read on and see what was in their heads, see what their motives were. And if you can create those amazing characters, your readers are going to get invested in those characters. I mean, that's what George R. R. Martin has made all his money doing and all his crying fans and oh god season seven's coming so you want to make sure that in your novel you include characters that you as an author would feel genuinely upset about killing now that you have your readers invested in the characters the third aspect i've seen in great novels is that they have conflict throughout they don't save the conflict for just the end. They have constant conflict. Plot twists are amazing literary devices and they can drive your reader on through your book. It doesn't matter if it's a 300, 500 page novel. If you're able to put conflict and those plot twists in there, your reader is going to read on to try to see how those twists and the conflict are going to affect the characters that they love. Now the fourth element that makes best-selling novels is the use of short paragraphs as well as pretty common language. Generally, the language scope is between 7th and 8th grade level of reading. And when I say short chapters, this is where I'm going to look at the Da Vinci Code. Here's chapter 18. There's the end of chapter 18. Now, when you're studying, you probably count how many pages are in that chapter that you're supposed to read for the next day. If you procrastinate, that is. <laughs> like me. Most readers like to end their reading sessions at the chapter breaks. And if you're writing chapters that are 20 to 30 pages long, and someone's trying to read this before they're going to bed or if it's special potty time, they might not pick up your book just in fear of not being able to finish that chapter in that allotted period of time they'd hope. If you have short chapters like Dan Brown does, your reader is more likely to pause at the end of the chapter they're reading and think, I have time for another one, and then continue on reading. You're giving more options to the reader for when they can stop. However, if you have ever read Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code, you know for certain that the suspense and the cliffhangers at the end of the chapters kind of drive you on through the night till you're finished, both in exhaustion and with the book. It just makes the reader's brains happy to feel like they've completed something as opposed to stopping in the middle of a chapter and having to probably read a page or two before when they pick it up again. 
and that's lost reading time for your reader and for you. Now these short chapters are there for a reason. Dan Brown uses them so that he can switch main characters for the chapters. For example, he'll switch from Langdon onto the albino monk in some of the chapters. This helps drive the story because then the reader is also curious about what's happening to Langdon then. So they'll read the next chapter after the albino monk break. So you're getting three chapters read for the price of one. And the fifth and final element that makes books like Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code and Clan of the Cave Bear books such a thrill to read is that the author has such great and vast knowledge, whether it's through research or experience, that they are able to get you as a reader invested into their world where you become part of that world. The Da Vinci Code was able to break readers into Dan Brown's world and throw his four previous novels that were maybe selling about 10,000 copies to the top of the New York Times bestsellers list in the same week. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Anna with Always Write. And if you have any writing questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you like the video, please continue to like it and subscribe. I'll be back Saturday with a new video.